On the build show today, I wanna to do some testing on house wraps and a fluid applied to see if the perm rating actually means that a wet framing job could dry through those house wraps. Now here's the genesis for this. When I used to work in the Pacific Northwest, I was building houses in an incredibly rainy climate where it would rain almost every day during framing. And I was building houses on a crazy fast schedule where they didn't always really dry out before we moved on in construction. A lot of those houses had a Visqueen plastic vapor barrier on the inside, and they had a pin punched low perm house wrap on the outside. And when I had problems with those houses, in fact, we got sued for some mold issues in 2002, I remodeled some of those houses and found that I still had wet lumber almost a year later when we had Visqueen plastic vapor barrier and a low perm house wrap on the outside. So on the build show today, I wanna test some modern house wraps to see if lumber could dry through them. But the other thing I want us to be thinking about is of course, we should be thinking about owning a moisture meter and double checking. If our house gets wet, it can absolutely dry without problems. But before we move on in construction, we really should verify that all of our lumber is below 14% moisture content. That's real important. With that being said, today's video, we're testing house wraps to see how well a wet two by four will dry through. Let's get going. Most homes in North America are built with wood. The structure is wood. Now wood is an amazing building material because it can absorb moisture and release it. You know, when this wood was on the tree, that tree, if it was a sequoia, could move water from the roots 300 feet in the air to nourish the tree. Now wood in our houses, we want to keep dry though, because bad things happen once the wood is cut down, once it's being used for construction, if it gets wet and stays wet. So when we buy a, let's say a two by four from the home center where it's kept undercover and it's kiln dried, let's do the moisture meter test on this standard two by four. Okay, so this is a probe style and I'm gonna try and insert the probes as far as I can. This is showing about 8.7, 8.6% moisture content. That means that this wood is pretty close to equilibrium and is about as dry as it gets. Wood that's in our houses that's been air conditioned and is dry is something between maybe as low as seven or eight percent to as much as maybe 12 percent moisture content. Now, on the other hand, if I were to saturate this wood, in fact, I cut a bunch of blocks of wood and I put these little six inch blocks in a tub of water overnight, put some bricks on it to make sure that it was saturated, and then I pulled them out and put them in the sun for about 30 minutes just to get rid of the surface moisture, but they're still quite wet. I mean, you can just take one look at that and see that these, this end grain is saturated. Now let's see what the moisture content of this piece of wood is. It's been soaking 28.2%. The fiber saturation point of wood is about 30%. So you would consider this soaked if it's between 26 and maybe 30%, something like that. So what I'm testing here in the build show is what happens to wood over time if it's left to dry just naturally in the shade but outdoors, or if I've wrapped it in various types of house wrap. Now this is a test I've been wanting to do for a while. You know, this product by Prosico, a long shine build show sponsor, I've used a lot of this. This has a perm rating, so even though I've coated all six sides of this actually, Nathan did it for me. Uh, we believe that this will dry out over time. So before we coated it, you can see here's the moisture content, 23 and 25, so almost saturated, pretty close to saturated. And Fast Flash, this product here, if I put it on the correct millage, I wanna say the correct millage is like 15 mils or 12 mils, something like that. It should have a perm rating of 14, meaning that you can dry through the product. Now on the opposite end of that spectrum, you would expect the perm rating of a Ziploc bag, assuming it's sealed correctly, is basically zero. So we're gonna see between this one, we're just gonna lay out uh, and see how it dries versus this one that has zero ability to dry how it does. And then also have two other basic house wrap products. This is a really low cost version you can buy at the home center. I'm actually not a big fan of this particular product. 
but we'll see how it does. And then this one is uh, one that I had left over from a video. This is Henry's Blue Skin VP100. And this one's actually pretty high perm. This is 33 perm. So if you're wrapping your house and you want an airtight but vapor open house wrap and you're in the north, this would be a really good choice. I've just sealed it with its own uh, stickiness. You can see here some stickiness still showing there. And that's all we've sealed these with. So with that being said, guys, let's leave these out for two weeks and we're gonna come back and open at least one of the bags. We're also gonna leave this one as a control. And then this one, again, as a control that's already dry. And let's see what the moisture contact changes over time. y'all we're back from christmas break it's been just shy of two weeks actually 13 days let's check the moisture content of all these these were outside uh not quite in the sun and we had kind of mild conditions here in austin texas but this was our control so this was at 8.6 percent moisture content it's actually dried a little bit it's at 6.2 so still pretty dry this board was saturated at 28 percent 13 days ago, and check that out. It's at 11.6. So that has dried quite a bit. Not quite to the level of this one that never got wet, but almost. So that's a pretty interesting control. I would say that 11.7 is where we would be if these house wraps were very vapor open and would allow moisture to get out of them. So first let's check the Ziploc bag. This should be a good control right here. This was at 25.6%. There should be, oh yeah, it's still, you can tell it's still very wet. There's still visible moisture on this thing. Let's see how she did. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it from the drier looking side. Check that out. 17.5%, 17 plus percent. Let's try it on the end grain. 17.9. Okay, I'll quick cut away. I was watching the video and you know, I didn't realize this or I didn't think about this. How is it possible that that two by four, which was let's say 25% saturation content sealed in a Ziploc bag went down to 17%. I didn't think about this when I was shooting the video, but I, I realized later in watching this, if you look at that Ziploc bag, there was a lot of condensation in the Ziploc bag. And I think that's what makes up the difference between the 25% the two, the two by four was when it went into the Ziploc bag and this 17%. That condensation came out of the two by four, condensed on the plastic that didn't go away, but it did come out of the two by four. And that's why it's at 17%. The one thing I can't totally answer though is why do I not see any mold, not see any mold growth? You know, we typically are worried that Anything above 15% when it comes to moisture content can lead to mold growth over time. So two weeks in a Ziploc bag, I thought I might see something, but you know, mold typically likes more broken down things. Had I had a piece of sheetrock in there uh, that might have been a little square that had gotten to that saturation point, I might have seen that, but interesting not to see that on the two by four. But I think that condensation on the bag ultimately explains that. Let's keep going in the video. Okay, so let's start with the basic house wrap. I'm gonna cut this open. We're gonna get out the two by four. Let's see what it looks like in here. Oh, I would say that looks like it's dried quite a bit. Yeah, that's looking way better than when we put it in the bag. Check it out, 12.1%. So that dried nicely, 12.1%. Okay, next up. Let's use the Henry Blue Screen. Now this has a higher perm rating of 33. Oh, it's funny, it's stuck to the wood too. This one's even harder to uh, pull off because it's a peel and stick, which I always prefer peel and sticks because of the air tightness nature of them. Okay, we got some exposed wood here. Let's try this one. Oh, look at that, it's even drier. I'm gonna try it one more time. We'll just do it straight through the house wrap. 10% moisture content, how about that? So this higher perm rating did work. And the Prosigo Fast Plash is a perm rating of 14. 
let's pull this off here. Okay, so higher perm rating than that inexpensive house we're at. And this one's at 14.1. Now, of course, we could take multiple readings and that would uh, give us better results. But I think what I was trying to prove here actually works that when you put wet wood behind a house wrap that has a perm rating and it can actually dry through it. It'd be interesting to run this test for, let's say just a matter of a few days versus long term. But ultimately these are gonna be protecting your house long term. And in a place like the north where there might be some drying outward in the winter time, you do wanna have a permeable exterior weather resistive barrier. In the south, where we're gonna be dehumidifying to the inside most of the year, 10 months, 11 months of the year, or maybe running air conditioning here, we can get away with a really low perm or zero perm WRB on the outside. But in the north, we really want a permeable exterior, assuming we have inside insulation. If you're interested in vapor barriers and what that means for your climate, I'm gonna to link to a video below where we kind of went in depth on what and why and where. But I think this really does show that permeable house wraps are important and the wood can dry through those. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.